Hello guys, welcome to the next episode of uh, my freestyle uh, broadcast, uh, so banter bleeds, but well, I don't like the name of banter bleeds, I call it learn from chat bleeds because my main idea, my main intention is just to make you learn something new about chat. Um, so I usually uh, avoid trolling my opponents or something like this, but you can call it banter blitz, of course, so no problem, such as a uh, much more common name for shows of this kind when somebody plays uh, bleeds and explains something. So as usual, I am going to play several games against viewers mainly today. So if you want to play against me, just uh, come and challenge. So I prefer five minutes. Uh, maybe three minutes sometimes, but mainly five minutes uh, because it leads to uh, yeah, better quality of uh, annotations, better quality of play and so on. So if you play a bit longer uh, Bleeds game, you can learn more. Uh, today I chose uh, this time, so actually evening. Uh, I want to check if it is better uh, for me personally to play uh, in the evening if compared to um, well, previous episodes when I mainly played in the morning, so this usually produced a lot of blunders, it was quite annoying to be honest, but well, we will see, maybe there is no uh, big difference, I mean, uh, between morning and evening um, in this sense. So, um, let's see if I have uh, challenges already, uh, not really, which means that, well, just as usual, it is a good tradition already. I will start with um, some, uh, yeah, just games uh, against uh, uh, random opponents uh, because, yeah, there are no challenges at the moment. Okay, let's see if everything goes fine with the stream at the moment. By the way, if you are already online, just let me know if everything is fine uh, with the stream. So, leechess.org, everything's fine. Yeah, from my side, from my point of view, everything is more or less fine. So, I'll just start playing chess and then we'll see. So three minutes, three minutes I play flamenco. It became a great tradition, by the way, almost every stream starts with the game against flamenco. But uh, we can notice at the moment that the guy is a bit lower rated. So usually he's rated around 2500 as far as I remember, if I'm not mistaken, but I can be mistaken easily. And well, this time He's 2300 plus, which is also not bad, of course. So let's play knight c5. Mm, here I usually castle. Maybe he prepared something against it. Let us see. Now it looks like we play exactly the same as usual. So I just attack the pawn e5. Rook e1. Now, as far as I remember, as far as I remember, I just played f6, undermining this e5, which is possible. Why not? Here, I just played bishop to f5. So every time we just go for this line, I don't know. My opponent likes it. I also like it, to be honest. So I just play it with pleasure. <clears throat> it feels like a position with the advantage for black already. Uh, so the first comment in chat, uh, yeah, everything is going on on league chats. So you need an account in league chats to play. And as you can see, my nickname is Mostrovsky there. So just come and make a challenge on league chats. 
Got bishop c7, I usually just take on b2 against Flamenco. <clears throat> By the way, I already have two challenges. So just as usual, it is the last game against a random opponent, after which we will come back to uh, challenges from viewers. And here, let's say queen g7. There are a lot of different ways, I think, to play. This, well, looks more or less solid. Let's play solid chess, right? There is another question, Andre, do you, are you actually living in Germany? Yes. I live in Germany, that's true. <clears throat> Rook C1. No, Bishop F5. As usually against Flamenco, I somehow miss, yeah, a lot. <laughs> that was a great blunder. So as we can see, there is no much difference. Yeah, there is no much difference between morning time and yeah, evening time. That was a great blunder, of course. All right. But every time when I lose to Flamenco, I then start playing good chess and Yeah, maybe it is exactly the case for this episode as well. So I lose this one for sure, because it's absolutely lost now. Yeah, that was just an amazing blunder. I mean, so stupid. Maybe because I just started reading comments. Well, okay, there is no sense in uh, wasting the time. I'll just resign this one and now let's start playing uh, viewers. So Kramnik student is here. I'm happy. Uh, Ferris Nyan Nyan uh, is the one I didn't play. So let's play. I'm playing with black and okay, 2584. Not that bad. Time control casual? No, we play blitz. We play blitz. Oh. John Bertalemu is here. But, uh, well, it is John Bertalemu 6660. Probably not a real one. Right? Right. <laughs> okay. D5. Knight c3, d takes e4, followed by knight e5 is kind of a natural idea here. I don't know how to challenge you here in Lee Chess. So you have to go to actually the list of players and then find me there Mostrovsky and challenge me from there it's not that hard in fact uh Kramnik student says that uh, Sopiko has made a video on the scotch maybe I have to watch it yes do it he will have more chances against me then. But probably you have good chances in each and every game. Anyway, so even without great knowledge, you play great. But, well, if you have a chance to improve, if you have a chance to come up with uh, better knowledge in the opening, of course, just use this chance. Why not? All right, 95 position is interesting. I still have extra pawn, but uh, white starts exerting a known pressure on my f7. Probably wants to capture an f4 already. Let's start with the bishop b6. I think it's a normal move. I protect f7, control this a2, g8 diagonal. Maybe intend to play b5 even. 
but my main idea was actually to play knight d7 to fight with this annoying knight e5 because this guy looks like the most active piece at the moment in white's camp so i want to get rid of this guy maybe it's not the best approach for black i mean white has a chance to regain the pawn but at the very least looks just okay because I complete my development and so on. Yeah, hello everybody in chat. I'm happy you are here. It's always a pleasure to share something about chess with you guys. Okay, let's take on f4 first. This means I have currently a pair of bishops. But maybe it's just for, I don't know, one move or something. Now I think I can take on e5. Looks like the move that creates a weakness in opponent's camp. At least this one on e5. There is also a possibility to continue with the queen b6 check. But I'm not sure if it gives me anything. There is a chance also just to play queen c7, attacking e5. I guess this is something. This is something. Let's just attack this e5 pawn. Chronic student says, maybe you should say something about your video. What do you mean? Which one? <laughs> Which one? This current one, maybe. So, I already said that. If you mean something like this DVD on the chess world, well, yes. I made a DVD. It is possible to buy it. I'm not a big fan of marketing the things this way. So today we are going to play chess and discuss what is going on on the board mainly. So e5 is hanging, rook on f4 is hanging as well. Which move white is going to make? That's interesting. Rook g4. All right, so this gives me a chance to take on e5, but let's have a look what is going on with the queen d7 move. So queen e5, queen d7 might be annoying a bit. Um, I have also a possibility to play queen b6 check and then to take on b2. This pawn looks also very tempting to grab. But then rook b1 will be played, so position is not very simple to estimate there. Okay, rook a to d8 looks like a reasonable continuation as well. So let's start with the rook d8, just attacking the queen. And then we'll see. Maybe queen b6 after all was the best move, yeah. Because uh, my rook a to d8 gives my opponent the chance to play queen b3. Now I'm more or less forced to take here. But I have a feeling that this position is very cool for black. In fact. So now I can play queen f5 attacking the rook. But there will be h3 I think. It gives me nothing. h5 is a move now. Just attacking the rook, and when the rook goes away, I can take on e4, something like this. It's kind of idea for me. Let's just play h5 and see. <clears throat> oh, it's Whitehawk X is here. Good evening. Artur Navrovsky is also here. Great. So all these guys usually follow my Chess24 broadcasts every Friday every Friday night. So 
So my point in this position that if rook goes away, I can take e4. But I will do this not straightforwardly, maybe. Or maybe I will. I'm not sure. Let's see. My bishop on e7 is still hanging. That is annoying fact. Hmm. I actually wanted to play rook f7 here, creating sort of bishop c5, but then why can take on c6? Which is annoying. Protecting the knight on e4, I mean. And if I take on e4 now, then queen takes c7. And again, it looks like white is fine. Let me just to keep attacking with the bishop h4. But then rook goes to e3. But then bishop f2. Yeah, I think bishop to h4 is a move here. G7 is protected. So it's a an, just a legal move, normal one. Interesting. Interesting chase. Yes, Mox is also here. Wow, great. Great. I'm happy. So bishop f2, kind of cool tactics. Knight takes f2, queen takes e3. By the way, rook g6 was still a move for, for white um, instead of uh, playing rook e3, but after rook g6 in this situation, I wanted to play king h7, just attacking the rook on g6 and then winning it. All right, so interesting, interesting game. Uh, let's have a look. e4, e5, f4 takes, knight e7 is kind of, yeah, this old line that in my opinion um, is very promising uh, for black. Uh, first of all, because it is quite rare. So in many cases, uh, white uh, simply doesn't focus on uh, learning this 97. And it makes a great sense because I developed a piece. Uh, I want to protect f4 pawn uh, in some lines. It is just good idea. For example, after d4, d5, if uh, white plays e5, I just play knight g6, protect an f4 and then continue development the normal way, bishop e7, castles, and then fine. So for a long, long time, uh, I'm playing with the extra pawn uh, without much compensation. So after d4, d5, knight c3 is kind of main move, d takes e4, knight e4, knight e5, it's also main line, and here c3, so actually uh, not uh, the most popular move, um, and probably I could have uh, reacted with uh, something like queen e7, uh, attacking the knight, uh, and the point here is that uh, bishop d3 no longer works fine in the view of f5, winning the piece. And if not, then what to do? Queen e2 looks a bit ugly. Uh, knight e5 also looks risky. Uh, so even if I don't have f6 or something, I have something like knight c6, also very promising move against knight e5. Well, white's position becomes quite annoying to play. So this is the thing I missed probably. Uh, I played bishop e7 instead, and after bishop c4, castles, castles, we had a uh, more or less typical position for this line. Uh, again, c6 is probably not the best option for uh, black here. Bishop e6 looks much more natural to develop a move uh, with the idea of knight e3 already. Uh, c6 was kind of a waste of time. And after knight e5, at some point, position became uh, completely balanced, in my opinion. So after this capture, for instance, uh, queen c7, bishop e6, and f takes c6. I had a feeling that uh, it should be equal, more or less. So, yeah, maybe bishop takes e6 was too much. Instead, um, I would recommend to, to try maybe knight to d6. That was interesting try, interesting option. And if, for example, rook to d8, which I wanted to play, something like rook d4. So, yeah, maybe black is still a bit better because uh, of a uh, slightly better pawn structure. Uh, so this pawn e5 is potentially a weakness, but uh, in the blitz game, well, it's quite hard to, to prove that uh, black is better. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, this looks playable. After this, bishop e6, f takes e6, white also had some chances still. Um, and here, most likely, I should have just captured on uh, e5 immediately. And after queen d7 to come up with the same... Uh, idea like in the game, right? So we have the same, but I already have an extra pawn, which looks much better uh, version for black. But I didn't see this uh, when I uh, played this rook d8. 
So I just played rook d8 and then after queen b3 I was kind of forced to search for uh, a good uh, possibility. Mm, and I found this queen e5, queen b7, h5. I think that after this black is much better because of just concrete bishop h4. Yeah. And now after rook g6 there was a suggestion in chat rook f7. Yeah, rook f7 is good. But after rook f7 there is queen c6 or something. And uh, actually the knight is protected. Not so clear. So I think king h7 is better, just attacking the rook and uh, there is nowhere to go, right? Um, yeah, the rook is trapped all of a sudden. All right, anyways, not a bad game. Uh, let's keep playing. So, uh, поехали. That was a Russian word. Is there anybody who speaks Russian in chat today? There were a lot uh, during previous episodes. So, yeah. Anyways, let's play. John Kellen says, oh my God, my computer voice is perfect. I'm Erwin29 on Chess24. Oh, wow. Yeah, you had a problem. Uh, last time. Well, actually, it was probably my problem, not yours. So I have a feeling that uh, there was something wrong with uh, the general settings. Uh, not sure what exactly, but something was definitely wrong. Okay, bishop c4. I've never played it with black, to be honest. No one played it against me before. So I definitely don't want to take one more pawn on b2. Instead, I want to grab the initiative with the d5 move, but I'm not sure if it is a good idea. So d5, bishop d5, knight f6, bishop f7 is annoying. Mm, instead, what to do instead? Uh, d5, bishop d5, knight c6 looks interesting, but in this case, white just regains the material. Maybe just to play knight f6 and after e5 to play d5. This sort of counterattack is possible, I think. Not quite sure, uh, but let's try. All right, and here I wanted to play d5. Bishop goes to b3. I mean, I don't have six is hanging, right? That is annoying. <laughs> okay, I can play knight to g4 now, counter-attacking. So e5 will be handy. Should I do this or not? Yeah, why not? Let's try. Also, I'm trying to exert some pressure on f2. Bishop takes d5. Okay, bishop c5 now looks very tempting. There is a threat of bishop f7, of course, but after bishop c5, my queen is protected. So, to play bishop c5, just... Yes, why not? Everything looks protected. So it's a normal developing move, attacking f2. Yep. But I have only one minute, so I have to be faster. That is probably the main problem now, in my position. Lack of time. Let's exchange queens. Let's take this on a5. Take this on h3. Now I can put the development somehow. Knight a6, let's say. Still a pawn up. Still a pawn up. F2 is hanging, by the way. Why didn't I take it? I have no idea. What I will do very soon, maybe. No. Not in this game. Okay. Let us simplify position even more <laughs> this way. <clears throat> Let's take it. Knight c5. Knight e4. H6. Just in case. Let's 
So there is extra pawn, but there is still a problem, a big problem with the time. But all right. <clears throat> yeah, I lost several tempi. I think now I will just Take this one. There is the question if I have the time to convert it. Probably yes. Yep. I was fast enough. I was up fast enough. Okay. Whew. On the three seconds. Well, I actually won a lot of games with only one second on the clock. It's not a big deal. And uh, well, interesting game. Interesting try uh, to outplay me in the gambit line. Um, I do believe that uh, there are uh, more convincing options for black to uh, tame this um, gambit so after knight f6 uh, e5 is probably not uh, the best move probably knight takes c3 is better still having great chances maybe queen b3 deserves attention here just attacking f7 have no idea after e5 d5 looks good and now i have good squares for my pieces so after bishop b3 knight goes to g4 attacking e5 and f2 and after bishop c5 i think my position is already um yeah uh, already very good so uh, let's keep playing. Um, let's keep playing. My yeah, very very young son is crying on the background. So I do hope uh, my wife will solve this problem very soon, because at the moment it kind of deflects my attention. Um, so uh, all all uh, viewers of my shows in Chess Twenty Four already know this, but for new uh, guys. I'm just a, a young father, so sometimes there is a problem with the background, but well, I do hope it's not a big deal, right? All right, um, let's keep playing. There is a... Uh, there is a challenge from... Oh, well, it's very hard for me to pronounce this uh, name, but uh, it's definitely the guy I've never played before. Let's play. I have a feeling that I'm playing with black more than with white. But okay. Our stream today is kind of positive thinking stream. So yeah, if I want to think positive, should be just okay to play with black as well as with white. Not a big deal. Let's keep doing it. Bishop a4, knight f6. Okay, so Rui Lopez. Rui Lopez. Probably the main line. Rook e1, yep. b5, bishop b3, d6. c3 castles. And h3 or d4. Or even d3. Okay, h3, h6. d4, rook e8. Mislov variation. So h6, just to cover this square to prevent knight g5. Rook e8 is to prepare bishop f8. Now I just overprotect e5. And at some point want to take on d4 and take on e4. It's not possible at the moment because of bishop d5 resource. So bishop d7 to protect the knight on c6. And now white also protects e4 pawn, so e d4 no longer makes sense. But there is a chance to come up with this maneuver. Knight a5. Bishop c2, knight c4. 
So the idea behind this maneuver is uh, to bring the knight to a bit more uh, active position if compared to c6, or at very least just to make it possible to play c5, to undermine the center. So, typical situation, I think white will just close the position after this c5. And, well, there will be very long and complicated play on both sides of the board. So bishop d3 first. All right, I'll make queen c7 move, intending to play c4 maybe at some point. But now white will take, oh no, I thought that white will play c4 after bishop d3, but this gives me a chance to play c4 myself. So let's check if I can do it. c4, bishop b6, cd3, bishop c7, take on c2, then e5 is hanging. No, it's not very good. Not very good. So I will play c4 most likely very soon. How to improve the position, how to prepare. To bring the rook to d8, the no. So d4 will be critical as well as d5 after this c4. Well, let's start with the g6 move, just restricting knight g3. Maybe preparing bishop g7 at some point. Yeah, everything depends on what white is going to do in this position. So if white plays c4, then d4 becomes weakened. Becomes weakened. And I can maneuver one of my knights to occupy d4. The question is, will I have a chance to do this quickly or not? Mm, it's not clear. Let's keep playing. Rook d1. Okay. So now what about improving this bishop a bit? Not a great improvement, of course, but at least on c6 it looks a bit more active. Now I want to improve my rook and attack this bishop on d3. Knight goes back to f3. Okay, now queen b7 looks natural, but probably there is a possibility as well to play knight e7. Yeah, so now I want to bring my knight to d4 through f8 maybe. Right or not? Let's try it. Yeah, probably it was better to take on c4. Yeah, I missed, missed something here. So c5 was hanging. The thing that I just simply blundered. I don't think that white is better after that, but position becomes slightly annoying because of my bad pawn structure.
Okay, Queen is still targeting my c5 pawn so that I can't really play knight f8, knight e6, knight e4. C4 becomes quite natural, but I have to understand that there is a possibility to pin my pawn then. Maybe it makes sense for me to start with bishop d3, but this move looks not very good. I exchange wrong pieces. So maybe I'll just play bishop f8 now. Protecting c5 and intending just to play c4, in fact. Queen a5. Strange maneuvers. But okay. Everything is playable here. Now c4. Does it make sense? Not really. It will be just a mistake. Let's play queen c6 first. Have no time. My opponent plays very good. is probably too optimistic for white but who knows maybe it's also good and playable <sighs> not sure what to do here just have no time but White's pieces are misplaced at the moment. But most likely White will just win this on time. After this move, however, I believe in the power of my position, to be honest, because white is absolutely constrained. Pieces are absolutely misplaced. <clears throat> so this position should be absolutely winning. Let's get rid of unnecessary pieces and repeat the same trick with the queens. Yeah, like in the previous game. Okay. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Whew, interesting game. Interesting game. So now actually at some point I played badly. So my opponent decided to uh, opt for this um, uh, line that leads to some simplifications. After knight f1, bishop d7, and uh, this, he decided not to close the position with the d5, which uh, I believe uh, the most promising uh, way to play this with white. So just to close here in the center and then to prepare f2, f4 gradually. Um, according to my experience, it is the most annoying thing that can happen with black in this situation. White simply has a bit more space, and this plan of f4 is usually quite annoying. Uh, bishop d3 is a uh, kind of possibility, of course. Um, and I think I missed the opportunity to play c4 at some point. So just to play c4 maybe, um, just right now, why not? It's also possible to make position absolutely uh, unbalanced after the ed4, cd4, and to play c4 here. By the way, also move. So for example, after bc4, bc4, bishop c2, um, I can think of something like d5, but uh, we can see that here white has good center, so maybe it is not the best opportunity. Um, so maybe after bishop d3, I could have played uh, c4 without taking on d4, it's one possibility. Um, queen c7 is also not that bad, but after d5, d5, uh, and queen c2, I actually failed to play c4. So I calculated the line bishop takes b6. Uh, cd3, bishop c7, dc2, and here e5 is hanging. So bishop takes c5 guarantees, um, well, it guarantees nothing because of bishop a3, by the way. So the resource I missed. 
So probably rook to c1 should be played here first and foremost to deal with this c2 pawn. And then, yeah, I have problems because e5 is still hanging and c2 drops. So after queen c2, I played g6, which is probably also not the best option here. Um, most likely something like bishop e6 would, would have been normal preparing c4. And if white plays c4, just like in the game, uh, black can start this maneuver. Um, so it's possible just to take on c4, bc4, and then knight to d7. So it's possible to bring the knight to d4 through uh, c6 as well. So it's not necessary to bring it through e6. Actually, it uh, takes even um, less, right, if compared to the plan I uh, played in the game. So in the game, I made several mistakes. So this uh, knight d7, um, yeah, c4, bishop g7 takes, takes. So yeah, here white is simply better because of the better pawn structure. That's, that's the wrong thing uh, with black's position. And here the computer suggests a4. Well, maybe, yeah, why not? Just playing a4, forcing me to exchange on d3, then rook almost automatically gets to c3, a5 is possible just to bring my knight to the passive position and so on, yeah. So after this exchange, I just uh, keep playing with this awful bishop g7, my pawns are bad and so on, yeah. So my opponent was very close. All right, uh, let's keep playing. Let's keep playing. There are a lot of uh, challenges. So let's play. Um, this guy. And again with black, come on. Is there any chance today to play with white? I don't know. E4, E5. Knight C3. All right. So my opponent doesn't want to play. Doesn't want to play Rui Lopez, which is cool. Because I'm a bit tired of this Rui Lopez. It happens every time. Each and every Friday, a lot of games played in Rui Lopez. And here on League Chess as well. So I usually play this simple line with uh, just taking the light squared bishop. I prefer bishops to knights. That's why I play this, but bishop e7 is probably too passive. But okay, even this looks okay to black. I mean, long term, my bishops will be good. At least I believe in this. Maybe I'm too optimistic. Maybe I'm just too optimistic. Yeah, e5 is hanging. That's no in fact. Knight g4 will be too much. I'll just take on f4. Okay. Now, can you increase voice volume a little bit? All right. Nothing changed, actually, compared to Friday. Nothing really changed. Bishop takes f4. Castles. And now c6. So covering d5 square, maybe preparing b7, b5. Also thinking of queen b6 at some point. But the main idea is, of course, to control d5, to have a chance to 